All right, so we're going to cover some master shooter stuff, and we'll cover um, some tourniquets and then whatever the questions you have for me or anything. Okay, so um, we'll start we'll talk, talk about uh, tourniquets. Actually, I'm going to step back. I'm going to talk about active uh, just bleeding. We'll start with that. Anyway, I just got something um, back two hours ago. Somebody sent me um, on email and it said, Tourniquet use urged in public safety push. The White House is uh, is pushing to make tourniquets as commonplace as AEDs in schools, stadiums, airports. Um, this just came out, I think, today. But there has been a push that wherever you see an AED, underneath it, to have a tourniquet. And there's companies that are making those now. It really is a very, very important piece of equipment. It's a lifesaver, amazing lifesaver, and it should be in. And I'm not saying you guys have to have one of your personal first aid kits, but, but um, I mean, if you can, that'd be great. They're about like $30 each. It's not a huge expense. Um, but at least in the team, you guys have a, you guys have medical kits, in the team, right? You guys have any tourniquets in there now? Personal. Okay. okay. And how many, how many DRT have in their medical kit? Do you know? One? I don't know. Yeah, we don't have any DRT. You don't have your city one. Okay. Next to you guys, you guys haven't gotten them yet for whatever reason. The city one. The city one? The city one? Not yet. Okay, I'll change it up. It's fine. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to city council. Um, you, you, guys, you guys need to have them um, in your kids. Um, it is acceptable now. The tourniquets now became part of basic first aid. It used to be that paramedics would carry them, then they say, well, okay, EMTs can now carry them. Now it's part of basic first aid. It's been approved um, Red Cross and a few other places. So it, it just, it's a very important thing. All right, let's talk about bleeding first. Because bleeding kills more than like a lot of other things in a disaster. So you want to stop the bleeding. And to stop bleeding is pretty basic. And you, and you guys probably all know how to stop bleeding, right? Direct pressure. And if that doesn't work, put more direct pressure. Okay? And just wrap it around the bench tight. Okay. All right, so that's, that's, hopefully that's, that's basic. Bleeding that is not stopped by direct pressure. Bleeding that continues to bleed through bandages. Bleeding that's uncontrolled on the extremities. The next step is a tourniquet. That's acceptable. Okay. And it's mostly arterial bleeding. You cut an artery. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a question. And I'm guessing that most of you are going to give me the answer I think you're going to give me. And then I'm going to tell you something else. All right. If, if something is bleeding and you bat, and you, you, bat, you put direct pressure on it, it bleeds through. And you wrap it, it bleeds through. Time for tourniquets. The tourniquets indicated uncontrolled extremity hemorrhage, uncontrolled extremity bleeding, which means if I put bandages on, it's bleeding through bandages. I cannot control it. So by definition, that is the immediate indication for putting tourniquet on. Okay, so I'll use the question I'm going to throw out for, for you. An arterial bleed. Let's say here, this artery here. It's bleeding, I'm putting, I'm putting a bandage on, I'm holding it tight, and it starts to bleed through the bandage. What do I do? Another one. Put another one on top of it, right? Mm -hmm. it Should I take it off and replace it, or no. put it on top of it? All right. Now, you guys should learn something like that 99.99% of the population doesn't know. Take the bandage off and replace it. Mm. So everything you've ever been taught about that is wrong. And we're actually trying to get it out in, in the literature. It's showing up instead of the in some of the medical journals now. We're trying to change that philosophy. We used to think that if you bled through the bandages, if you took it off to replace it, you're going to pull off clots. In reality, there's no clots there. Because as blood, as the person is bleeding out, clots cannot form. It just that you have to have bleeding stopped enough to actually start to form the clots. So you're not doing any good by adding bandages to it if you're not controlling the bleeding. So what, we, what you need to do is take the bandage off and put another bandage on and direct it right where that bleeding is. You see, when I put a, when I put a piece of 4x4 four four gauze on here, that gauze is compressing 4x4 four four inch space. That's not doing any good. I need to compress the artery, the exact space. So if I bleed through the bandages, I'm going to take it off and put one on right over it, and that's where I'm going to put the pressure. Re-bandage it. Okay, does that make sense? So, that, so your band, the bandage that you put on that you're bleeding through is not right over the artery. 
Okay, so there's different bandages out there. This is one called the oleus bandage. And what they did, knowing this new thing that most of the population does know, so you're ahead of the rest of the world, um, is they took a bandage and put like a plastic cup on it. So if you're bleeding through bandages, you take this, you see where the bleeding is, the cup goes over it, and, and exactly, and when you put the bandage on, you're, you're putting pressure on one spot, one artery. I'm not bleeding four by four inches, I'm bleeding in one spot, and so this will stop the bleeding. Okay, so don't, so, and if you ever take bandages off and re-bandage somebody the right way, someone's gonna stop you. Because 99.99% .99 of the population says, no, no, you're pulling clots off. Just so you know, you're gonna, it's going to start showing up in the medical literature it already has. And uh, some people that work trauma centers will work on this stuff. We know it. And uh, so I want to give you a little tip on that. What was it called? This band is called Oleus. And if I can borrow that for one second, I just want to say something. I'm going to pass it around for everyone. This bandage was designed by somebody in the military, I don't know which branch, and he designed something that if you only had one bandage, this is the one you want. So what he thought was, okay, when I'm bandaging people, I, I get like four by four gauze, as long as I get extra gauze to cap the wound, and I want some kind of elastic band, and uh, you know, and so he, he said, okay, what if I put it all in one? So he, took, he did that. So you open this bandage up, and see it's not, it's not wrapped right. Um, you have big, thick water and padding here. This goes right over the wound. You got that little cut to press on an area for pressure point, and you just wrap it. And every few, every few spaces on this thing is a little piece of Velcro. So I think this person actually dropped the bandage down a hill and it rolled down a hill, like a wrap. So this could only drop this far until you release it. If the person has a wound that needs to be packing, be packed, you take out all this gauze here, and you pack the wound, then you wrap it. So you can pack the wound, you can put pressure on the wound. It's also in here, and I think I took it out so I was using it for something, but in here is a little piece of plastic that you use to seal a chest wound. Yes. Somebody has that. And the last thing is, if somebody gets something, a chemical splash in their eye, you can actually take this pressure thing, pop it off, and it becomes an eye cut to irrigate the eye. So you took all these things and put it in yeah. one, single bandage. And a lot of tactical teams right now, law enforcement tactical teams are carrying this because it's just one simple, um, everything in one bandage. So <coughs> here's the Velcro thing. If I drop it, it's only going to go so far. Here, I'll pass that around. If that doesn't work, we're going to go to the tourniquet. So when do you buy those bands? Where? Yeah, I mean, up here. Um, I'm trying to think. There's a company. It says military, but it's not I think I think the company's called Rescue Essentials. The band is not that much. It's like six bucks. But if you had a couple, if you had first aid kit and had a couple on those, you'd be able to take care of a lot of things. Rescue Essentials. If anyone has like the phone or Google, I know you all have phone. Somebody wants to look it up. Somebody wants to look it up. Appreciate it. Yeah. Sure. That's, that's just a band. That's correct. That's correct. Now some people like the Israeli bandage. Some people are familiar with this. It doesn't have that big wad of packing in it, but it's got a pad. You put the pad over it, and you just wrap it real tight, something like that. And those were great too. I mean, so, and if, you didn't, and if you didn't have anything else, you just had a regular bandage. That's great. But there was a big disaster, and I only carry one. You know, like if I had to grab a bunch of stuff, I had a bunch of gauze rolls. I would grab, I would just grab a bunch of gauze rolls, start sticking in my pocket, my backpack. This is the best, this is the, actually the best thing in a disaster. Because this I just wrap until the bleeding stops. So I can take care of bleeding with this. If I have a, if I have a huge bleed, I may take one of these and put it right, again, you know, against the bleed, and then take another one and wrap that real tight. So this will stop bleeding. If you have somebody with a broken limb, now I have a triangle wow. bandage. Yeah. So I can take care of breaks. If I have somebody who broke their leg and I want to buddy split them, I can put a sweatshirt or a blanket you know, or a pillow between their legs, use this and wrap it around and I can split the lower extremities. So you can stop bleeding 
split things, all just with a gauge roll. So this is just, this. we don't have to go real fancy stuff. <coughs> These are just really basic things. This advantage that's been passed around, it's kind of high tech, it's everything in one. Um, and I, have, I carry some of those, but these work. <coughs> Turnkey's the lifesaver. Turnkey's the important thing. So we're just going to go through this handout. Um, I know you guys don't have a hard point on it, so I don't get There's two times you would want to use a tourniquet. The first time is uncontrolled extremity hemorrhage. Uncontrolled, which means you tried to bandage it, put pressure on it, didn't work, then you go to the tourniquet. So amputations, do that. Um, severe gunshot wounds over major arteries, bomb blast. With bomb blast, bleed more than anything else. Bleed more than a gunshot wound, bleed more than a regular amputation. Um, they're one of the hardest things to stop bleeding. So if there's a, uh, if there's, if we do get a bombing and you respond to a bombing, you're going to want tourniquets. That's the most important thing. On an amputation, whether it's a, a saw or some kind of problem, um, it won't bleed that much. The amputations I see really don't bleed that much. The arteries kind of go into spasm and spasm off, and it's not a lot of bleeding with it. And a bomb blast, what happens is there's an a, 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 a airway that goes through under a lot of power. And what the airway does, it breaks bone and rips off the extremity. Okay? That mechanism ripping off, it's really hard to start, stop those arteries unless you have a So regular amputation is not a huge problem. Bomb blast, yeah, this is, this is a lifesaver. The other thing that you'd want to have a tourniquet for is in case of a major earthquake where you have people trapped. There's something called crush syndrome. If you have an extremity that is completely crushed for more than four hours, okay? so to, to have the crush syndrome, it's got to be four hours minimum, it's got to be an extremity. You have no blood flow to that area. If you go to rescue them, let's say a refrigerator fell on somebody's leg, and you go over there to the rescue them, and you take that refrigerator off them, um, and that thing's compressed that leg for more than four hours, there's a chance they could die. And minimum, they're probably going to kidney failure. Because what happens is, past where the, where the crush is, there's no blood flow there. There's a lot of toxins that build up there. Acids, a lot of potassium, very, very strong toxins are right in that extremity. It takes four hours for that potassium and acidity to occur. If after four hours you decide to lift the refrigerator off somebody to get them out of the house or building, that real strong acidic toxic fluid, a lot of potassium in it, is going to go into the circulation. If it hits the heart, it'll probably go to the ventricular fibrillation and kill them. The muscle that gets crushed will eventually release this. Inside the muscles is real thick gooey stuff. And when the muscles break down, that thick gooey stuff will be caught in the kidneys. You know, per person with kidney failure. They may have to go on dialysis. So it's very dangerous. So the way you fix that problem, because you want to get somebody out, it's a major disaster, they're trapped, is after four hours, you put a tourniquet on them, and that keeps the toxins there where they're supposed to be. You take the refrigerator off them, and you get them out, and you get them to a hospital. And tourniquet's preventing those toxins from getting to the circulation. That's a life saver. Once you're in the hospital, there's things we can do. We give, we give drugs to fix the acids. We give stuff to flush the kidneys. We'll take care of the problem. We'll take the tourniquet off. We'll probably be OK. Um, so you don't want to ever release anything that's totally trapped in the extremity that's been there for more than four hours. <coughs> Kidney failure or death. How about less than four hours? But what? Less than four hours. Less than four hours is not a problem. It takes four hours take to go. Take the refrigerator off. And yes, it takes four hours to go with those toxins. There has been any cases in under four hours. Now this this complete crush. You know, somebody just gets something heavy on them and they can like move their fingers and still you still you know can feel things and you, have, you press the nail bed and have great cap refill and all that, and it's not a problem. But if you see someone that can't move their fingers and it feels totally numb and there's no circulation for more than four hours, that that's what causes it. It's all that blood like, trap there. So that's the other indication for turning it. So in disaster, there's a big disaster, a big earthquake in you know Agora you will be trapped in their homes and there's no other help and you guys are it, then that's something you want to save someone's life. Okay. Wait, different types of circuits. This is one that the LA City Fire Department uses. The military uses this. It's called a, a CAT tourniquet. It stands for Combat Application Tourniquet. And tourniquets are pretty simple to put on.
And it's basically, you're going to put it around the extremity. You can tighten it up. Tighten around the extremity. And turn. Turn until the bleeding stops. Keep turning. When the, when the bleeding stops, there's a little place to put this in here. The little thing goes on top of you right now the time that turn gets on. It needs to be cranked down until the bleeding stops. And ultimately until there's no pulse. Because you want to, you want to stop all blood flow. Okay? If, uh, if it's not tight enough, it's actually going to cause more bleeding. And uh, these hurt, by the way, a lot. So if, if the person's really hurting, then you know it's put on right. These things are they're painful. Because what you're doing is you're totally cutting off their circulation. But it's it's a lifesaver. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Alright, so I want to go over a few more things on this um, The types of tourniquets are listed here. There's different brands. There's different preferences. I said this is called the cat tourniquet. There's um, this is gaining popularity. This is called soft tourniquet, soft T. Stands for Special Operation Forces Tactical Tourniquet. Most of these were designed for the military. Same principle. A little narrow band on it. Yeah, they actually, this is, they have a, this is a second generation. They have a third generation now, which is a one and a half inch band. Oh, okay. So if we're going to get it, it's two things. It's wider, it's lighter, actually three things. It doesn't have this little buckle. This is just to extra so it doesn't slip, but you don't need this. The new ones don't have them. And same thing, put it on, tighten it down, turn it. And then when you're done, you put this in here. Huh? It has a keeper, a keeper. Yeah, you just put it, you just put it like this to tie it down. And there's a little place here to write the time you put it on. What if you had to make one out of your bandage and just twist it from a pencil or something? How wide should it be? They recommend at least one inch. Preferably about one and a half inches. Nothing, nothing more narrow than that. And uh, yeah, if, you know, get creative. You know, if someone needs a tourniquet and there is none, then I'm looking around the room and I was trying to find somebody wearing something that's not all right. You guys are so casual. You guys are way too casual. Um, there you go. That might work. Kind of they are. Um, I did. I did. I did a big drill for Secret Service, and I, I purposely had enough injuries where they ran out of tourniquets. I want to see what they were going to do. So some of the agents went around. It was, it was kind of their victims that were formal and wearing suits and ties and all that. The agents looked around the room and they started picking on people's neckties. Wow. Yeah. And there you go. There's a tourniquet. They, put it, they tied it. They tied the necktie. And they got something, either a you know keychain or a pair of scissors, wherever they have a flashlight. Tighten it. That's your windlass. It's called a windlass. The part you turn. And the neckties were great. They were thick. And they were great as tourniquets. So you just need to be creative. Um, tourniquet time. If you, get, if you use a tourniquet, remember these three numbers. Two, four, six. Now this, this, that. What that means is, if you put a tourniquet on, up to two hours, there's absolutely zero complications. Don't worry about a tourniquet, up to two hours. The thing they used to say about, you know, once you put a tourniquet on, then, you know, you may lose the limb and all that, that's not, that's not true. I mean, there's exceptions, but in general, that's not true. A tourniquet can be on for two hours. <coughs> you remove it, there's no issue whatsoever. Perfectly safe. If you have a tourniquet on for more than four hours, then we run into problems. What problem do we run into? Correction. I just talked about. If you turn it on for four hours correctly, you cannot take it off because you're going to get those toxins in the heart and cause cardiac arrest problems or kidney damage. So, two hours, two hours is totally safe. After four hours, I wouldn't remove it. Six hours, anything after six hours, they may lose your limb. So what you heard about, if you're going to make that decision to put a tourniquet on, they may lose the limb when you need an amputation. That is true after six hours, not before that. Okay, so two, four, six. Um, our fire department, LA City Fire Department, they're like, they use tourniquets, and the policy is you don't, re you don't remove them. For our paramedics, once they put it on, it stays on, don't remove it. It gets removed in the hospital, so if they start bleeding again, we can take them to the operator and all that. That's not a big deal, because we're going to get to a hospital, yeah. you know, in, in another one or two hours, of course. That's not an issue. Now, you guys, if there's a big earthquake, and you guys are isolated, 
You put a tourniquet on someone because there's a bunch of injuries, you're just trying to save lives and do the most critical. And you put tourniquets on people, um, and you realize we're not getting help for a while. Yeah. Then somebody needs to make a decision where you know what? Okay, now that things are calmed down, we've we, you know we've treated people. I got a victim here with a tourniquet. It's been under two hours. Let's see if we can remove it. Because then we don't have to worry about her, her kidneys, or we don't have to worry about losing the limb. If I can remove it and replace it with direct pressure, and hopefully the bleeding, she's got some, you know, the clotting's taking place, and the bleeding stopping, it stop. That's great. So, even though we want our fire department to leave them on. I, I want you guys to try to take them off if you're isolated here in Agora and you're under two hours. Well, that's why I'll turn it to the customer. Yeah. The place to put the time, right there. Yeah, but we might not have that. We might just have the so Right, so somehow, yeah, somehow you need to make it known and have the time. Now, all the first aid books say take a pen and write TQ or turn it on someone's forehead. Um, and that way everyone sees it. The problem with that in real life, if you, first of all, if you have a pen with you. Second of all, if you have a pen and someone has greasy skin, you're not going to be able to write on it. You can't go right through the skin. So they talk about it, but it's a little, little outside of the factual. But if you have a sharpie or something, right on a clothes, right on the arm, you know, like take a sharp tourniquet or TQ, left, low, you know, left leg at 12 o'clock. Just so that someone is aware of it. If you have a casual collection point, you have medical people there, then they should be monitoring it and doing traffic and stuff like that. But don't be afraid, don't be afraid to take it off in a disaster. Because you will save the person's limit. Because by that time there'll be some clotting going on, hopefully the things will work fine. Um, so we'll I'm down to the other part. Um, once placed before the time, then you apply it. Okay. The way tourniquets are supposed to work is they should go about two to three inches above the wound. Now, I'm not so worried about bleeding in the lower arm or the lower leg or anything like that because it doesn't bleed that much. You don't have any major arteries there. The bleeding is going to be the upper arm if you have a big artery here and the upper leg if you have a big artery here. Okay, those are the ones we're concerned about. So we want to go two, two to three inches above the bleed against skin. Okay? We prefer it not over clothes, but against skin. Because if I, if I'm, the idea is that tur that tourniquet real tight and stop the bleeding. If I have change in my pocket or keys, it's not going to it's not going to make it tight and seal. Plus right? the wound, you have to see it, so you have to cut your hands off. That's right. Right. Look at it. right. You want to see where it is. You want to put it against skin two three inches above. Okay. Now that's the proper way to put a tourniquet on. However, <clears throat> when we teach law enforcement, we teach them to put it as high up on the extremity as possible. Okay? So if you ever go to a class and they go, no, two, three, oh no, we put it up high. And everyone's talking to it up high. They are correct. In an active shooter, in an unstable environment, we're going to put it up high. The reason for that is if all of a sudden there's a shooter here, and I, and I get shot and I have blood over here, you're not going to have time to take my pants off, cut through my pants. You've got to go take care of a lot of people. So, so if I have a bunch of bleed here, bleeding going on in my pants, where's the actual hole? Who knows? I don't know. So I'm going up high. I'm putting your arm up high, tightening it down, and moving on to my next victim. So when I say that the way it's designed is two to three inches above the wound against skin, that's assuming we have time to cut the clothes off and look at the wound. If you can't, put it up high, and then you're safe. Okay, so that's so that's why you may you may hear different things about that. Um, so don't put it over a joint. We don't want to put it over the elbow or over the knee because you already runs underneath it. So all you're going to do is put the tourniquet and squeeze both. You're actually not able to squeeze your artery close. So we want it fleshy part. Tightness <coughs> to bleeding stop, I already mentioned. They are going to have pain. Um, I've ordered tourniquets before. Um, when paramedics call the hospital, I'm one of the people at the other end giving them orders. I have ordered tourniquets. When I do, I automatically order more people because they really hurt a lot. You guys are not going to have the luxury to do it but just realize they do hurt. But it's going to save your life. And then sometimes two tourniquets are needed. Um, there are times where you crank a tourniquet down and the person keeps bleeding. You may have to put in a second one. It's either because there's a major cut to the artery causing a lot of bleeding, you need two tourniquets, or because the person is on a blood thinner like Coumadin. And a lot of people are on blood thinners. And one tourniquet may not do it, you may need a second one. So, um, yeah, if you put one on and, and they're still bleeding through it, one exactly, we're right about it. 
And just some common errors with a tourniquet. Um, not use it when you should. If you see someone bleed through bandages and you try to re them, they're still bleeding, don't wait. Just put a tourniquet on. They need it. They're bleeding to death. If you, if, you take a, if you take a gunshot wound to the femoral artery, you can bleed to death in four to six minutes. It doesn't take long. By the time you get to them, you know, unless you're right there in the same room. Um, if somebody's on Coumadin, you can actually bleed out in two or three minutes. You go into a major shock, call class for a shock in a very short time. So you, uh, if, you, if they need it, put it on. Don't hesitate. Um, another error is, is using it when you shouldn't. If, if I got somebody where I could just put bandage somebody and stop their bleeding, they'll use a tourniquet. You want to save it for someone who really needs it. Right? If, I, if there was a shooting in this room and I walked in this room and the first person I came to, I saw you have a bunch of blood there. It's like, oh, tourniquet. I can move on to you. Oh, hey, okay, tourniquet. I can move on to you. Oh, you need a tourniquet. I used it. So I only want to, we call this medical supply triage. You guys all know what triage is. Well, sometimes we have to do supply triage. If I have two tourniquets, and I have a room full of shot people, I'm not going to put it on the person with the gunshot wound to the arm. I'm going to put it on the one with the leg, because you bleed faster from this big artery in the leg than you would from an arm wound. So you have to think about your equipment. You don't want to run out of equipment. Yeah. All right, so I wish you had the luxury of having a lot of tourniquets with you. Point too high above the wound. We will do that in an emergency situation. If we don't know where the bleed is, we're going to go high, so that's OK. Um, not remove it when you could. Again, that two hour window, you can remove it, great. Um, not applying it tight enough. If you don't put it tight enough, they will actually bleed more. Because what you're doing is you're compressing the vein instead of the artery. If I compress your vein and not your artery, you're going to bleed more. Okay. If I want to draw blood from you, what am I going to put on you? A little tourniquet, right? Why don't I put a tourniquet on? So you, you bleed more, so I can fill up those tubes faster, right? So if you put your tourniquet on, it's not tight enough, it's going to, it's going to cause more bleeding. That is, you're drawing blood from you. And they're not having it immediately available. That's why I mean, I really hope to see uh, allow you guys to carry it and have it in your kids and stuff like that. And um, that's 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 definitely life saving. <coughs> okay, what we're gonna do real quick is I'm gonna pass out some tourniquets and you're gonna put on your partner. 